been ordered by the doctor to give Mr. Johnson an ABG. That's the indication. I'm going to check his chart for any allergies. Um, oh, I'm going to gather up my equipment first, my ABG kit. Then I'm going to check his chart for any allergies, any abnormal norm, abnormalities in platelet count. Um, no contraindications there. So I've got my equipment. I'm going to prepare to go into the room by washing my hands. Knowing never to try to put the gloves on before your hands are completely dry because it just takes a really long time that way. And then I'm going to glove up. with all y'all. So I'm seeing Mr. Johnson, who is a, a male, 63-year-old. His um, diagnosis is heart disease, and he's using diuretics. So that means he's taking water pills for probably hypertension, but that is not a contraindication for an ABG. Respiration is 16 beats per minute. Heart rate is 96, blood pressure is 121, 72, all within range. Heart rate's a little bit high, I suppose. And then, okay, then I'm all ready. I'm gloved up. I'm going to walk into the room with my equipment. I'm going to introduce myself. My name's Tom with Respiratory Therapy. Mr. Johnson, can I have you state your full name and birth date, please? All right, perfect. So your, doc your doctor has ordered to do an ABG and arterial blood gas today. That'll give us a little bit better indication of what might be pro problems with your, um, with the, the disorder you have. Um, so have you have ever had an ABG before? Okay, well there's a little bit of, um, we're sticking a needle in an artery, so there might be a little bit of pain, but but we'll make it as painless as possible. Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to check your uh, modified, doing modified Allen's test. So I'm going to apply pressure on both your brachial and arter and ulnar arteries. I'm sorry, radial and ulnar arteries. And I'm not, Mr. Johnson, if you could make a fist, and let go, make a fist, let go. Make a fist, let go. Then I'm going to release his ulnar artery and see it returns back to pain flush. So that means he has good collateral artery in both his radio and ulnar. So in case something goes wrong with his radio artery, he'll still be getting blood through his ulnar artery. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to prepare to take the ABG by getting all my equipment in line. And I would have had filled this up with ice before, but that's just a precautionary thing because I'm going to get it over to the ABG analyzer within one to two minutes, um, so there won't be any need for ice. Okay, so I'm going to get my antiseptic. There's no um, need for any type of pain an analgesic, pain, med pain reliever on this. We're just going to do it without any for anything to relieve the pain because I'm just so darn good at this you won't need anything. So I'm gonna get that ready. I'm gonna get this ready. Iodine, so that I could use that, but I'm going to use this instead. And I'm going to 
sterilize the site of injection, make sure we don't get any infection because that is another hazard. Then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to one hand, well first I'm going to check to make sure the pebble's up and it really isn't. Which, uh, yeah, it is. It's good. It won't give away. I'm going to uncap it. Yeah, we're, first of all, I'm going to hyperextend Mr. Johnson's wrist at about a 45, 30 to 45 degree angle there. Okay, and now, that ready, sterilize, uncap it, like this, and I'm going to slowly insert the needle bevel up at a 45, whoops, our needle manufacturers just don't make them like they used to. Holding it like a pencil. Go ahead and slowly stick and watch for the flash. And there's the flash. Okay, so it's filling up now. I'm going to wait till I get whatever it needs, but about one, uh, uh, one whatever. I can't remember. Okay, so now I'm going to withdraw it and immediately put pressure on it. While doing so, I'm going to be rolling this to make sure the blood's mixed and then I'm going to go ahead and cap it and I'm going to I want to apply at least five minutes of pressure to this to make sure it's clogged it's, the bleeding has stopped and we'll just assume that's five minutes has passed I did the same thing as my comrade there we go and this is rolled okay. No ice is necessary because I'm going to run immediately over there. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to uncap this now. Put it in the shark's container. And then I'm going to... Yeah. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Before I took it, I should have depressed, depressed the plunger to release the heparin. And now I'm going to cap it. I'm going to make sure all the air is removed. And then, and then I'm going to race over to the ABG analyzer. But first I'm going to say this, um, okay, no more bleeding here. Mr. Johnson, you did really well. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, here's your uh, bell. If you have any questions from, for the nurse or me, just ring our bell. Okay, then I'm going to Leave the room, declove, wash my hands, and take this over to the ABG machine, run it, and it comes back with the results of pH 7.42, PHCO2 49, PAO2 81, HCO3 So that's the pH is normal. But on the alkalytic side, which is going up, and <clears throat> HCO3 is high. So we know it's metabolic alkalosis and the CO2 is uh, also high. So it's fully compensated because of pH, fully, fully compensated metabolic alkalosis. PaO2 is 81, which means he's normal hypoxemia, uh, but just on the verge of being a little bit mild. I'm done. Okay.